think I am live. Yes, I am. <laughs> Let me switch screen here. Ta -da! There I am. Um, if you're tuning in, this is week three of the Dilly Flower Hexagon Sew Along. And today we're actually going to sew the Dilly Flower and the Dilly Edges together. So exciting. Oh, hi, Jessica. Oh, yeah, if you're here, so please say hi in the comments so I know you're here. Kathy's here. Yay! And we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Let me just give folks a few minutes. Hi, Denise. Hi, Julie. A few minutes to jump on because uh, I'm still figuring out this whole YouTube world. Not quite sure how fast the notifications go up that I'm live, but we'll give everyone a few minutes and let's say hello in the comments. Hi, Helen. Hi, Heather. How, how are you all doing with your dilly flowers? I would love to see those. I've seen a lot on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm a little bit scattered hopping between the two um, social media platforms. But, oh, seeing all your dilly flowers make me so happy. Yay! Carolyn, hi from Oregon. Beverly is here. Yay! All right. I'm just going to switch cameras so we can actually see what the heck I'm working on here. Do these a little bit. There we go. Oops. Tip something over. Ooh. Wendy. Oh, you're from Iowa. Nice. Oh, Carol, you made it. Australia. What time is it in Australia right now? Curious. There we go. Carol's in Australia. I think she's part. I'm in um California, so it's uh noon here, twelve o'clock noon. The middle of the day. Hi, Starlin. And Betty's here from Georgetown, Texas. Idaho, Vivian. Hello, hello. Who else do we have here today? Got quite a few here. Yay! And uh, let me know in the comments. Um, hi, Judy. It's 7 a.m. breakfast time. All right, breakfast and dilly flowers. Works good. Hi, Noni. And Rose is here. It's 3 o'clock. Also, you're on East Coast. Hey, Are you in your lunch break? <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. Um, so let me know in the comments. Are you working on the half inch, three quarter, or the one inch size? What are you guys working on? Hi, Jessica. You're in the Bay Area. Nice. I'm going to give the comments a few seconds. You're between San Francisco and Sacramento. I think my comments froze here. Da -da -da. There we go. And Kayla says, yep, she's on lunch break. Enjoy your lunch. Like breakfast and lunch. Talking about breakfast and lunch is making me hungry. And then we have Judy's working on one inch. Hi, Joanne. Let's see who's working on a different size. Uh, oh, Wendy's saying the half inch and three quarter inch. Very good. Uh, Julie's working one inch and half inch. Starlin is one inch. Awesome. All right. So this is the one inch that I'm working with right here with you guys today. So this is the one inch dilly flower and the corresponding one inch dilly edges that go together. Hi from Denmark. Hey, 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 son. So glad you could make it. Uh, I never got a chance to uh, visit Denmark when I lived in Sweden. How sad is that, right? Very sad. I went to Norway and Finland, but never to Denmark. Hmm. I need to go back and visit. Uh, Carol, you like to do one each of each size. Oh, and then you'll decide. Yeah, that's good. That's really good approach. Yeah. Uh, the one inch is really good for making a mug rug. As you can see, the size is nice. And like I bring my mug over here, my cold coffee, I could put that, some cookies and goodies. And the half inch is really good for coasters and the three quarter is just the perfect size in between, right? Yay! <laughs> All right, so I have my glue sticks here. And if you have a liquid glue, this is a liquid glue version from um, Elmer's, but you might have seen their little uh, tubes, uh, the little dispensers, the squeezy dispensers. Let me grab a little piece of paper because I don't want to get this everywhere. Hold on, and I'll show you the difference. So this one 
is the liquid school glue, washable glue pen. They call it the washable school glue pen. That's what they call it. And it comes out. <laughs> Let me squeeze this. <laughs> oh my god. Now it's like stuck. Well, it's supposed to come out like liquid glue. Oh, there we go. Okay. See, like this drip like that, right? So if you have applique glue, like uh, what's it called? Roxanne's, right? Roxanne's applique glue. You could use this, but I found that liquid glue just takes a little too long for me to dry. And then you would just put little droplets and sometimes it just comes in down and it, yeah, no. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to apply these two together for us to sew together with the glue stick instead. Handy dandy. So glue stick, I can go really thin or really thick, right? So go thin. Turn it a little sideways, kind of like when you apply lipstick. You don't go like this, right? You apply it sideways. So put a little bit at the side. That's uh, so I'm gonna use my purple glue, washable school glue stick, so you guys can see. But this is also when a uh, glue pen comes in really handy because it's thinner. So you get a thinner line of glue. Can you see? Hi, Cindy. I'm glad you can make it today. Jan's here. Gloria, hi from Idaho. Hello, hello. So you have your options. So if you have a glue pen, go ahead and use your glue pen. And if you don't have a glue pen, you're perfectly fine with the glue stick. And you don't need to fiddle with uh, liquid glue. But if you do have liquid glue and you prefer for your applique-ish projects, then go ahead and use that too. I'm just going to put this to the side. Put that so I don't get glue everywhere. So I want to make sure that you have your pieces pressed after you've sewn them together. As you can see, all my seam allowances lay really flat now, right? Because I actually went ahead and pressed this right before we went live. And same thing for the delete edges. Hi, Evelyn. Oh, you're not late at all. We just barely started. Oh, maybe I should introduce myself. <laughs> I keep on forgetting to do that. So my name is Elise Beck. And so we're doing the Dilly Flower Hexagon Sew Along here. We're in week three. And if you miss week one and two, you can still go ahead and catch up on my YouTube channel, which is where you're watching this, obviously, right? And um, you can get the templates and whatnots it's from my shop, too. Uh, later on, I'll link everything under this video. But if you go back to the previous two videos, you can see all the links there. And if you join the sew along, you actually got access to our secret sew along page, right? Where I put all the information there for you. So you can just click and find your way around there and navigate really easily. And if you haven't joined the sew along, it's still not too late. Just go to my website at elisebeck.com, my name, and .com. And you'll see a uh, sew along sign up page there. If you get, uh, sign up, you'll get an email with all the links that you can check out too. It might make it easier because there's a lot of different sizes and whatnots that you can choose from. But we are working on the one inch dilly flower and the one inch dilly edges today. Okay, so that's my introduction. All right, so I'm just going to grab my glue stick first. And see, remember how we bent this all these ways in the center when we're sewing the petals together, right? So don't worry about that center hexagon looking a little ragged, you know. We can still reuse it as long as your edges are fine. Actually, still reuse mine a few times, even if they look like this. See how you can see all the creases from when I was sewing my petals together, the sides, like so. So you're still okay. So what I'm going to do, um, remember how we didn't baste this side, right? And there was a reason why we did not baste this side by snipping and pulling it on top of the paper. And it's going to all make sense now. So if you're going to, can I, can you see through, oh, of course I chose a dark fabric, but if you see here, this is a quarter inch seam allowance, so it'll match up with the edge of the fabric that's basted on your dilly flower petals, okay? Carol, you set your alarm on your phone? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to flip this over to the right side. And the glue, I'm not going to put it on here. You could put it on here, but then you don't really know, did I put it too far into the edge? Is it going to get all sticky and gooey? So we'll just put it on the petal itself, right? But on the back, obviously. You only want to put where the seam allowance is that you basted it over on the paper. I'm going to put extra. You don't need to put this much, but I'm going to put a little extra so the camera will pick it up and you can see. 
So do as I say, not as I do. You do not need this much glue, okay? It's just for everyone so you can see. See how I just put the glue on the fabric? Yes? And now I'm going to line this up with one of the um, edges. And I wish this was more see-through, but I'm going to put that on here. So basically, you'll feel the edge of the paper here. Uh, let me do this. Hold on one second. I can mark it so you can see. This doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna, actually going to feel for where the um, paper is, just so you guys can see what I'm doing easier. I'm just following along with where the um, paper is going on the back, roughly. So now I feel where the paper is. You'll feel it when you're doing yours, so you don't need to mark it like this, just so everyone can see. So I have the um, one petal that I put glue on. I'm going to match it up right along where I traced there so you can see which is the edge of my paper and another thing you want to pay attention to also is that these seams here match up see this one this seam right here and the seam along the petals between the two petals and the two edge pieces that seam and same with this seam here so you would match these up does this make sense or am I going too fast Let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, you were in your sewing room, Cindy? Thanks. Yay. So glad you could. Yeah. So glad you were ready to hop in here today. So did you all catch that? You want to match up your petal to the edge of the paper here on top. And you'll feel it when you're putting it on top, putting it, uh, the petal on top of the edge piece. And then we want to align these two seams. So we'll match up here, match up here, and match up the petal against the edge. You want to butt it up against the edge of the paper on the edge piece. So you'll feel that. I wish I could like show you how to feel it <laughs> through the camera. <laughs> but if you have your dilly edge and dilly flowers right now, kind of just put them together on top and then you'll feel the edge of the paper on the edge piece and kind of put the petal up against it so you'll feel them kind of snap together like so. I hope that makes sense. Okay? So now we got one petal. See how fast the glue stick dries? Whereas if it was liquid glue, I would sit here and wait for it to dry and twiddle my thumbs. But I know a lot of people prefer the liquid glue, so it's really just a matter of preference. But I, it's just, just really easy. And then I'll also show you with the glue pen. And Kayla, I won't forget to put my cap on today. There we go. <laughs> on both my glue sticks. So see how I just fold the uh, flower over? Yeah, Wendy, yeah, you can definitely put a light box under. But you'll feel it as you're going. And as we're once we match one up, the other ones will just fall into place. See how they already know where to go because one's there in place already. Yeah, try the uh, light box; makes it easier too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my um, glue pen. This one happens to be a Fonson Porter. Same thing as the sew line glue pen. Okay. So I'm gonna go and like I did with the purple, I'm putting extra just so I can make sure that the camera picks up on where the glue's going. So I'm just putting it on the seam allowance here. Okay, do you see that glue? This one doesn't show up as well as the purple, but you can tell where I put the glue, right? And now I can just go ahead and fold it and match it up to the rounded part here, the curved part of the edge piece. I'll mark that for you. It's right there. That's the top. So I'll just align those two, the top of the petal to the bottom of the... Um, curved part of the dilly edge. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. And I can wiggle around a little bit to make sure my seams here are aligned as well. And then I just hold it down a little bit and it'll dry into place. So I got two petals done and I just work my way around, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and use the purple one so you can see better. Where is my oh there you are. Yeah, slap some glue on there. So like I said, don't put this much. You do not need this much. Just so you can see on camera here. 
Okay, it all makes sense, Judy. And then this one I put in place. I feel the paper on top. But I already know as long as I align these seams here on the sides, this seam here and this seam here, like so, I know the petals right smack in the center of the dilly edge. So I got three out of six done, right? Like so. See how it stays put. And let me flip over now. And see how you don't see any glue on this side, even though I put big chunks of glue, right? Because they're all hidden under the seam allowance that we did not baste over the paper. Yes? Make sense? And this way, you actually get perfect little curves because you don't have to remove the papers before we're actually going to go ahead and stitch these down. So if this had been a complete piece of fabric, you would have to remove the papers before appliquing or attaching to the top, right? Because otherwise you can't get to the paper unless you were to cut a big hole to remove the papers, right? And then it's just going to look messy. So we kind of avoid that and then we get more um, options as far as variation go in the dilly edges. I could mix and match and gone scrappy if I wanted to. And there's less hassle because it's super easy to remove the papers this way because everything's open first for us already and it's really nice and neat isn't it neat i like neat yes i do okay so i got three petals done as you can see they're holding really nice doesn't help that i put like a ton of glue right but don't put that much if it comes undone you can always go in and put a little bit more so i'm just gonna keep on going and now I'm just going to do all three petals because I know it's already in place. So they'll fall into place perfectly. So I'll go to all three petals here. Da -da -da. Okay, see all that glue? It's just folded in half. And now I just fold it on top. And I just wiggle around a little bit just to make sure that the seams here are matched up. The seams between the petals and between the dilly edges. And then just hold it in place and at this point you can even give it a good press but just with the hot iron no steam needed and it'll kind of just set everything so I'm gonna give this one a press real quick and I'll be back in one second all right so I press this and it's stuck I'm going to flip it upside down, wave it, wave it, woohoo, and we're ready to go. Okay, so who is actually stitching or gluing these two pieces together with me? Let me know. And if you have any questions at all, and see like how this came, came undone a little bit. So I can just go in with the glue pen or glue stick, whatever, just lift it up and just put a little bit more to make it stick. Super easy. Julie, you are. Carolyn is. Yes, Barbara. Yay. Carolyn, you... <laughs> I'm going to make you a convert yet. <laughs> this part is just easier with glue than basting with thread, right? It just makes sense. So sometimes I think, yeah, even if you're a hardcore thread baster, definitely take advantage of glue when it just makes the whole process easier. But this doesn't mean that you have to, you know, glue baste all the pieces. So if you prefer to thread baste, then go ahead and do it. Um, Corinne asked, let's see, oops, my mouse. Is, do you press from the top or back side? I press from the top down, but you could press from the back too. Your choice, doesn't matter. I just want it to lay flat and the glue to just kind of set. Hmm, let's see. Oh my god, my mouse. Oh, there you are. Uh, ooh, look at that. Cindy's ready to go. She's, hers is glued and her needle and thread are ready. Yeah, see? Yeah, Carolyn really prefers to thread based and she does beautiful thread basting. But for something like this, yeah, just glue based. Make life easy. So you can cop onto the thread, thread part, right? Okay, so I've got some needles pre-threaded with thread here. And you know me, good old 50 weight ortho 
in white. This one is um, 2021. Can't go wrong. Plus, it'll go together with mine, right? I could easily blend this in because I got lots of white and mixed colors here, so you won't really tell. So if you're using light colors or dark colors and you don't want the white thread to show, yeah, definitely switch to a darker color thread. That is a okay. Let's see. Oh, Carol, it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you and many more. Happy birthday. How exciting. Hope you got fun birthday plans. And Starlin is ready. All right, let's go. So this should have all set already. So it should be stuck like so. And I actually, when I do a whole bunch of these, I'll, I'll just leave them at this stage because I might not be 100% sure I want these two to go together and I might want to switch around later. And after I glue them, I'll, I'll just leave it like this and make a whole bunch more and then I might just switch things around, right? So you're not stuck doing this, right? And so I'm going to go with, have a single piece of thread. It's just doubled over. I have a knot on the end. Let's go where we go. And if you've done applique before, this will be really easy to you. It's like cheating almost feels like. So I'm going to go up in between the edges here. So between the paper and the paper of the um, paper of the edge and paper of the petal. If you feel with your needle right here, you'll feel it go through really easy. Let me see my needle, see the needle right there? It goes through in between the two really easy, like butter. So I like to start on the corner. I'm going to start, let me start on this corner. And I can even come from the back up to the top. Let me see, right, let me flip this. See the needle right there in the corner? right here that's where it's coming up and i have a knot on my thread so it won't come undone let me see if i miss some comments um and diane says she uses a bit of glue all the time since i found out how easy it was i know yeah right and let's see oh it's julie's birthday tomorrow happy early birthday to you let's see all right okay ready so if you have your needle and thread and you come up between the two papers you got basically a slight ditch here in between the papers here the petal and the edge you'll feel it just come up really easy it should not have resistance against your paper you do not sew through your paper you're sewing right in between the two papers let me know. Cindy, since you had your um, needle and thread too, let me know if you try this and see how easy the needle comes up on the right side from the back to the front. See there? Right in the corner. Start in one of the corners. You pick a corner, whichever corner you want to start with. Okay. So I've come up and I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my front petal fabric right along the edge like so you see right there right along the edge and then I just go down in the same spot where I came up on the petal I'm gonna go in between the two papers the petal and the edge in the same spot to the back And then I come back up and repeat. Trying to look at the camera and with my hands, it does not work. <laughs> it's making me dizzy. So again, you come up in between the papers, the petal and the edge, right? And you can just go ahead and grab, go through the pe petal as you're coming up. You don't need to come up separately. In, and then we repeat so you could grab a little bit of the petal if you want or a lot like I did in the first stitch but if you grabbed already as you came up you can just go down a little bit away from where you came up and continue and so you should not be sewing through your um, paper okay 
So I'm just grabbing a few stitches on the petal as I'm coming up in the gap. I'm going back down and coming up a little bit up ahead on the petal like that. Do you see? There we go. And I continue. But this makes it super easy because you feel where you're going between the two papers. I got a knot in my thread. Let me undo that. And you don't have to guess where you should sew to get that perfect rounded curve on your petals. So go, if you have um, your Dilly Flower and Dilly Edge one set in front of you, go ahead and try it. And I'm just going to continue sewing and watch your comments, see if you have any questions. So I go down in between, come back up a little further ahead on the pedal, and I just come up and go through and same thing. Oh, good, Cindy. Smooth and easy, right? I tried um, needle turn applique too. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Not like my favorite thing to do because I don't like it when I don't get like that perfect smooth curves. But I mean, I've seen folks that are really, really good at it. And I think, yeah, with more practice, I'm sure I could get used to it. But this just makes the whole process so much easier. And remember, you're okay to bend these papers. Don't feel like they have to stand, you know, stay straight. I bend my all the time. Whatever makes it easier for your hands to kind of grab these pieces and go around sewing them together. So I go down between the petal and the edge. Like that. But I don't go down all the way. I come up a little bit further, see along the um, edge piece there, do you see my needle moving? And then I also come up in the corresponding spot, same spot on the pedal at that location and just grab it as like that. Do you see a few stitches? See right there? There we go. Do you see the needle? And I just come straight up. Uh, Wendy, you don't want your stitches too far away because then it'll gap away from, um, they might come apart, but, but uh, at least like an eighth of an inch. Mine aren't super close. They're kind of going big here so I can go around this fast. But same, uh, like your whip stitches, you don't need them to be quite that close, but a little wider than your whip stitches, but not too wide where you'll see big gaps, okay? Hope that makes sense. And if for some reason you kind of made your stitches too big and you find that your petals are coming loose, then you can always go back and just add a few extra stitches. It's easy to fix. Well, Heather loves needle turn applique. Woohoo! Do you do a lot of needle turn applique projects? So see how I'm just bending this out of my way so I can get into the corner here. And obviously, um, if you're doing the smaller sizes, it's going to be easier. Not as much edge pieces to wrangle here like that. The last needle turn applique I did was for um, the, the pink, the pink quilting book for, by Atsuko Matsuyama. Yeah. Oh, Cindy, you were making that quilt too, weren't you? The sampler from the book. The Happy Flower Quilt Book, yeah. That one. That was the last time I did needle turn applique. There go. I'm making my stitches a little bigger so I can finish one and show you the back.
And see how we're matched up here in the seams? Because we glued it in place already and it's just holding nicely. Oh, Heather, what did you make? Oh, freehand tree of life. Wow, nice. That's beautiful. Must have been beautiful. Okay, so I took a stitch in the corner. I'm going to take one more just to secure it. Come back up and go back in. And so um, normally I would just keep on going, but I'm going to secure this one for now so you can see what it looks like. Let me just do two stitches just in case I lose my spot. Mm -hmm. If I lift this up a little bit, do you see the stitches? I know it's kind of hard to see. They're right in between in the ditch, so you can't really see. I guess that's the point, right? <laughs> so you won't see it. Let me do this. See how it's stuck because we stitched it down. So my stitches are a little gappy, which is okay. Because if you're going to quilt over this anyways, you'll be fine. But they're right there. See how it's flat against the um, back, even if I bend it, because now it's stitched together. Versus if they glue, it'll lift off. See how it lifts off when I bend the paper? Like that. And the petal that I applicate, EPP applicate already, it just follows with the edge piece and it's stuck together. So then when you are done, you just go in here, doo -doo -doo, peel off the fabric and pop the paper out. Makes it so easy. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Ah, Pinky Queen, Cindy. Did you get a new computer yet to hook up with your Cricut? I'm going to continue with the next petal. I just come back up in the corner again. And this time I'm going to make sure I grab a little bit of the uh, petal too as I'm coming up. And go down towards the back and come back up. Rock the needle and just come back up a little bit further ahead on the petal. <gasps> Ooh, Pinky Queen Cindy, you got a new computer. Can't wait to see. And I keep on going. Otherwise around oh Helen you're lefty you are lefty so you would just reverse same process but reversing da -da -da. oh I'm not even gonna try with my left hand because my left hand is so uncoordinated but yeah you would just re reverse the process that I'm doing do you uh hand sew left-handedly or just right with your left hand or do you do all everything with your left hand i know there's a lot of um lefties that just write with their left hand but then they do a lot of things with their right hand too oh and carol's learning her scan and cut awesome and cindy um cindy asks do you leave the paper in the edge pieces for sewing blocks together yes you can go ahead and remove them in the petals and the center hexagon but you would leave the edge pieces together that way let me grab some of my other ones hold on one second Let's show what these they'll fit in the screen see how these are just sewn together right so you want to keep, I left all my papers in because, let's see, I just want it to stay flat and nice. But you would definitely leave the edge pieces here so that when you want to sew them together, you have something to put a right size together and then sew the edge here, right? So you definitely leave the edge pieces, whatever you do, after you sew the 
flowers to the edge pieces. You can go ahead and remove those papers, but definitely leave the edge pieces in. So you can use that for the edges here to whip stitch like EPP, like you were, you know, stitching two big hexagons together, right? Same concept. And that goes for the one inch and the three quarter inch too. Noni, you're left handed too? Yeah, just reverse. Reverse, reverse, reverse. So see how I said these would be perfect for coasters compared to the one inch? So this is the half inch and this is the one inch. Like coaster size. Wouldn't it be cute? Like a set of six or something, you know, a four or six as a gift. Dilly coasters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jamie, you bought a Cricut Maker? Wow, congratulations. I've kind of been wanting to get, in, get one too, but I'm a Silhouette user. So if you're a Silhouette Cameo user, hello. Kelly, you wish you were doing the small ones? He know we switch. Easy, easy. Yeah, it, at first it's a little awkward getting that, getting used to bending these a little bit, but like I said, don't be afraid to bend it like this. And that way you have more space to fold, you know. And these papers are pretty flexible, so don't worry about them coming undone or anything. Um, did, did you uh, thread base your edge pieces, Carolyn? Then you might want to be a little more... Um, they might pop out if you thread base it, unless you thread base through the paper, right? Ah. Let's see. This is from Patty asks. Love to applique dilly flowers on bags and even quilts, but if I use glue, it's hard to keep nice around edges after removing papers. Hand basting works better. Uh, wait, so uh, do you thread base then, Patty, and then you? take pop the papers out so if you want to just applique the flowers themselves to a bigger project always press after you sewn the petals to the hexagon right press 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 and press both sides front and back that way you want the um, seam allowance to lay as flat as possible and you want that crease to be set from pressing and then carefully remove your papers. And right after you remove the papers, it's still gonna retain most of its shape, just that the seam allowance might have lifted up, right? Because you removed the papers. Then carefully fold it back down and give it another press. That way you retain the um, uh, curved shape and it's much easier to applicate to a bigger project. But yeah, key to um, just doing the flowers on a bigger project is to press. Give it a good press before you remove the papers and right after you remove the papers too. Carolyn, thread based the petals and glue based the edge pieces. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it you, your edge pieces shouldn't pop out then. You shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, but I know, yeah, it's a little weird getting used to this, but see how I just keep on bending mine? Yeah, don't worry about it looking all bent up and banged up you're gonna give it a good press anyways afterwards and it'll look like new see this part might be tricky but we'll just bend it out a little bit Um, oh, Jamie uses starch. Yeah, that's a good use too. Of starch. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and use starch. Yeah, that way you're, you know, guaranteed to get those sharp creases to stay put and the shapes to be nice. 
Oh yeah, half inch, you don't need to bend the papers at all. They're much easier to fiddle with, right? Like, um, where's my half inch here? So I just got some edges prepped and then I can just put petals and they're so small, it just fits in the nook. Is it nook or crook of my hand? In the bend, <laughs> it fits there. Versus the, unless you got big old, you know, man hands are like, you're seven feet tall, your hands won't really wrap around these like they would around the half inch. Maybe even if you're, maybe if you're, you know, pro basketball player, you would have big enough hands to wrap around these. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's good tip too. Let me close that here. So Diane says, before I remove the paper pieces from the edges, I spray with starch and press both sides. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, do share your favorite um, starches. I use uh, Best Press right now. Anyone else have any favorites? Or oh, like good old just um, spray starch for dress shirts. That's easy to find too. Works well. Um, and Laura asked, do you find that starch shrinks your fabric a bit? Um, starch should not shrink your fabric. Uh, in, if you want to avoid, if it, do you mean like it shrinks in size a lot or it just compresses a little bit? And Jan, yeah, we just glued the petals, the whole flower to the back, the edge pieces. And now we're just going around stitching to secure the flower to the dilly edge circle. And Barbara Thompson says, I'm trying to decide what to use my dilly flowers for. Do you have a list of how many flowers for which project? Uh, like a big old quilty project or what kind of project? Let me know. Because I was thinking about giving you guys um, coloring pages too because I realized I never included those for any of my flower shapes really. And it's definitely something I could put together, yeah. Um, uh, and Jan, um, no, Barbara, so I'm doing, I've done the seven piece for like a little table topper. And I included the measurements for that one for the, um, yeah, for, for those in the, um, on the secret page towards the bottom, you'll see it. And Jamie uses good old Niagara. Best press flatter. Oh, Niagara is the most crisp. Oh, that's good to know. Plus, it's easy to find, right? In the supermarket. And Laura likes to punch holes in her papers to remove them after sewing. Yes. Just uh, be careful you don't tug too hard before the seam allowance is um, released from the papers. If you're glue basting, since we spent all this time stitching the petals to the edges, we don't want the stitches to come undone by tugging too hard. That's the only thing you have to look out for. A throw size? Okay, yeah. I'll put put a little sheet together for you, Barbara. No problem. And Judy uses Niagara too. Yeah. Oh, and Cindy uses Niagara too. Yeah. It's popular. Does anyone make their own homemade spray starch? I've seen a lot of people use it. Don't know how to make it, but... Seems like if you use a lot of starch, that could be a good way to go too. I guess there's a uh, vodka involved. 
<laughs> so don't don't sip the vodka while you mix. <laughs> oh, Carol asks, when does your daylight saving start? We actually start this Sunday. We uh, fall back. And then in the spring, we jump forward one hour. Spring forward, yeah. <laughs> Jamie would rather drink her vodka. <laughs> Carol, um, you're going into winter time now or what, what's going on? So, yeah, I'll be... Uh, so, yeah, well, um, the time converter converts everything for us. The, the link, did you try that, Carol? So next week will actually be 11 o'clock instead of 12, right? Because of, oh no, yeah, because of daylight savings. Ah. <laughs> I love, um, did you guys see Starling's comment? Google knows everything. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Speaking of Google, have you ever tried Googling yourself? Uh, it's interesting the things that pop up. <laughs> Spring forward, yes. <laughs> Forgot what it's called. <laughs> Fall back and spring forward, yes. Just means one hour less of sleep. Or, yeah, it's going to, I don't know, it, it always takes me about a week to adjust to the time changes. Woo! It's rough. Yeah, you'd be 1 o'clock technically if you're not, if you don't have time changes in your zone, air, uh, time zone. Yeah. Did I say 11 earlier? Yeah, I meant one. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> oh, no. That stitch was too big. Oops. There we go. And winter starts in June in Australia. Nice. wonder if it's going to be a cold winter there. I'm guessing we're going to have a really random summer here it's because weather's been so random already. Here in California. Um, Beverly Mark. Uh, her edge pieces are puckering. Oh, let me, oops. Let's see. On the two, she has some, will they iron flat? Yeah, most of the time they'll do iron flat after you remove the papers. So you're fine if they, they have a little pucker. If it's too big, then I would undo a few stitches and go back and do them. But you should be fine in general. And uh, let me ask you, did you do glue basting too, Beverly? And where exactly are they puckering? Just let me know. Uh, this part here or in between this area, in the dip or in the petal part? And on top, it puckers a little bit here. So when you glue basted these, remember, did you remember to put a little glue here to hold the edge down? See, I just stuck my finger in and did you hear the glue releasing? See how this one, the glue is still stuck there. I can't get my finger in. Oh, I'm going to release the glue. See? That'll avoid majority of the puckering if you end up having puckering right in between here see this one I secure too and that I showed you uh, in video one see now it's loose see how easy the glue comes apart from the fabric like that oh it's so satisfying <laughs> we're going through all of them now <gasps> just release and release like that But yeah, don't release them until you've sewn your petals to the back because that's the whole purpose, to keep it nice and flat for you. And 
Oh, whoops. We got a lot of comments all of a sudden. Here we go. Cindy, I got some vodka for starch. I got the cheapest they had. My son came over and saw it on my counter and said, Oh, mom, don't drink that. You need a better vodka. That stuff's not full. <laughs> Little did he know, right? <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, you can get some cheap vodka, can't you? Not for drinking, but for, yeah, for making your spring starch. Cindy, do you have a recipe that you use? Let's see. And Jenny says, I like the way that my daily flowers kind of sit on top of my background pieces after I sew them on. Yeah, they'll fall into place more as, you know, after the papers are removed. And it looks really pretty, I think. After you're done. Yes. Yay! And we keep on going around. Oops, oh, big stitch, big honker. So. Oh, oh, okay. Cindy got the, uh, oh, the recipe on Pinterest. Okay. And vodka was a couple of bucks. Awesome. So I guess you could go to, um, whoops, go to, uh, yeah, go to a uh, Pinterest and just type in um, spray starch with vodka, and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of recipes that will come up. So now a question: Does it smell vodka e? After you spray it, does it smell like alcohol a lot? Or do you mix in like some... I think so. I've seen people uh, mix in... Uh, what are those called? The scent thingies so make, to make it smell nice. What are they called? I think they have a name. I forgot. Oh, YouTube also, Kathy. That's a good, 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 excellent. And Wendy asks, when you get to the inside corner, this part, right? Oh, essential oils. Yes, thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> My brain is like, <laughs> um, and Wendy asks, when you go get to the inside corner, should you avoid stitching in the joint seam of the background? No, that's fine. Yeah. No problem. Because the paper ends before where you hit anyway. So you, it's not like you're going to get stuck on the paper. So you're okay even if you have a stitch here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, essential oils, yes. Is it okay if you mix in essential oils? Or will that leave like... um? some type of residue on your fabric, I wonder. Because I can imagine it's smelling like a lot like vodka if you starch a lot, right? Mm. Oh, okay. Cindy says, I never got mine made. It was before my transplant, and I got so sick to sew. I still have the vodka. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I'm at the end of my thread here, so I'm just going to go ahead and secure it in the seam allowance. It's just getting too short. And the, oops. And I'll just chop that off. And Barbara asks, have you made a wall hanging? I have a table topper that I made the filler diamonds for that I showed you guys in video one, right? So you'll you'll get be able to access those if you're making more than one 
and have to show me your daily flowers. <laughs> so that way you can fill in the diamonds in between the hexagons to make a bigger piece too, like even a quilt top, wall hanging, table topper. Yes, 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 yes. So I think, uh, oh, I did four while I was talking and reading your comments. Where did I end? Oh, here. Ah. I have two more petals to go and I'll be done. Okay, Jamie has a question for you guys if you want to help her. He has random question for the group. Is linen good for EPP if I mix it with quilting cotton prints? Anybody want to answer that? I love linen and I love to applique pieces. I would love to applique like flowers onto linen. I have a runner somewhere where I started with a different kind of flower on linen. And it just, I think, yeah, it's just, just the colors is nice with linen and like colorful flowers. Always looks pretty. Just the only thing with linen though, you might want to pay attention to is that that may shrink differently from your quilting cottons so you might want to want to go ahead and block your linen pieces by giving them a good burst of steam to make sure they're pre-shrunk before you put your um, quilting cotton pieces on there so they have the same shrinking ratio when you wash them and whatnot See, right? Yeah. Jenny says, many people incorporate linen into their quilts. And Judy, oh, the liquor evaporates? Gosh darn it. So we can't lick our projects after? <laughs> we spray base them? <laughs> Dang it. Well, that's good to know. So you won't smell all alcohol -y, vodka -y. We got drunk quilters everywhere. Woo! Mm. Oh, Wendy finished her half inch flower. Oh, wait, we must have applause. Yay! Yay! Very good. <laughs> Let's see, and Cindy. I would say yes, especially if you want to do embroidery or applique on linen. Yes, they shrink and stretch too. Yeah. It definitely makes for pretty combinations, but yeah, you just got to factor in the different shrinkage rates. I have not sent diamonds yet. Show me proof of your dilly flower, Judy, and you will get diamonds. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to send an email out to everyone so everyone gets it so they can submit their photos and get their edges. The diamonds, yes. <gasps> Jen! Your quarter inch is done too. More applause. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! One Denise! She finished too. Woo! Wait, applause! Yeah. <laughs> See, it goes really quick and if you know if you're just watching TV or whatever in the evenings, as long as they're based glue pasted together, they're stuck, it's super easy just to come in and stitch it together you know and good for on the go project too because they're there you just pick it up and just start stitching them together and you're ready to go oh and barbara asked what is everyone making with their flowers oops i keep on sliding it too close to me let's see Oh, Jenny, her three quarter just done. Ah! 
<laughs> Love it. Anyone finish their one inch? I got one more pedal to one and a half more pedal for my one inch and then I'll be done. Uh so who's this? Uh let's see. Uh Vivian's making a table runner. Awesome. Oops. Keep on missing. I'm trying to read and sew at the same time. Now that doesn't work. Oh, Barbara! Her, her one inch is done! Yay! Yay! Awesome, awesome. How, many make, how, how many are you making, Barbara? Or are you making one as a mug rug? Let's see. Oh, Jenny, yeah. It's really convenient to have a couple needles threaded and ready to go. That way you can just keep the flow going. Very, 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 yeah, very nice. Uh, <laughs> very good question. I have no clue what I am doing with my dilly flowers. Maybe a doll quilt for a grand girly. Oh, that would be so cute. So cute, so cute. <gasps> Julie has one pedal to go. Dun, dun, dun. And Cindy's making a throw. Ooh, that's going to be so pretty with 80 dilly flowers. Wow. Love it, love it, love it. Cindy, are you going to incorporate the diamonds too or just um, hexagons butted up against each other? And Jan says, I have no idea what I'm making yet. That is okay. This is a pro good project just to make a few... Come back to it, and then you can decide if if you want to make a big project, small project, or an individual mug rug, or a set of coasters. Super easy. Just going to do one secured stitch there. <gasps> and I'm on my last pedal, too. Woohoo! This is fun. Judy's making a table topper and Carolyn is making oh Beverly's making a wall hanging. I love that. And Jenny says, I find that my eyes are much better for threading in the morning. So that's when I thread all my needles. Oh, that's really smart. Yeah. Oh, have you used this too, Jenny? It just makes life so much easier. Even with needles that have this uber small eye, like I'm using this one, right? And they have a very, very tiny little eye, but this works really great. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea too. I love your ideas. Shelly says, uh, one idea that I'm thinking about is making a column quilt. Alternate columns with the column of pale background with colored flowers and the other column of colored background with pale flowers. Oh, can't wait to see. Let's see. Oh, can't wait to see, Shelly. Oh, let's see. Oh. Cindy got the magnifiers going. Oh, that sounds good too. I actually have to take off my glasses when I thread a needle. I know it's all backwards. It's crazy. Then Jenny has one of these needle threaders in every sewing box. Yeah, they're like awesome, aren't they? <laughs> Shelly, that's funny. <laughs> How, uh, which size are you making, Shelly? I'm not sure if you mentioned what size you're making. Even a long um, table run it would be really pretty. Uh, variegated like the way Shelly was describing. Oh. Ooh. So many possibilities. So little time. Let's see here. 
I'm on the home stretch of my last pedal. Dun, da, da. Oops, more comments. Let's see. What did I miss? See, yeah, even Jenny likes that design idea, Shelly. I think we all do. I can't even picture it in my head. You know what would be fun? You know how um, Tula has those um, solids, the super brights, and the more pastel -y ones? Even mixing something like that way? <gasps> that would be fun, too. Is anyone making Tula dillies? Ooh, Shelly, those are going to be nice. Yeah, of the one and a half inch hexi. In the PDF Dilly Flower templates, there's a one and a half inch included. The reason um, I never did the edge pieces for one and a half and the two inch, because no one asked for it. But like, if there's any, enough people asking for it, I can always add it. That's easy. Jamie's making a Tula and Owls in Glass. Ooh. Are you in the um, EPP Society Facebook group, Jamie? Don't forget to post and tag me so I don't miss them. Or, or if you're on Instagram, tag me there too, please. Please, please, please. Or add the hashtag. Dilly S-A-L. Dilly so along. Dilly S-A-L. Let me type that. Do on hashtag any even on Instagram or um, Facebook. Go ahead and add this hashtag, and then it'll all all your makes will populate under one hashtag. And I have like a dilly flower party every morning and evening. And look at all your beautiful makes. So we planted some um, lettuce in our backyard, and all these. Birds have been coming and eating up all my little seedlings. They're enjoying their organic lettuce, little rascals. They'll be growing dilly flowers instead because they won't eat those. Uh, Jamie, you post on Insta. Oh, yes, please tag me and use the hashtag. I check it every day. I'm just going to secure. I came to the end of my last petal. just going to secure my thread. Cut it up and got my oops, let me hide that comment. Today they're not going away on their own. There we go. And it's all done. Let me give it a little press. Okay, my iron got cold. cold. But you can see it looks better now, right? See how it looks much flatter now that it's sewn, uh, the flowers are sewn onto the edge pieces versus when it was glued, it was a little raised on top, but now it looks flatter even just looking from top down. And then if you look sideways too, see how it lays flat? Yes, yes. And they're all secured. And it'll be super easy to pop them out, but I'm gonna leave it so I can sew more onto here. So I'm done with one dilly flower. And I got six more to make so I can make a table topper. And how many more are you making? Let's see. Bye, Denise. See you next week. And let's see, did I miss anything here? Oh, is that what I have to do? Cover your seeds with straw mesh or grass. You know what I put <laughs> by my little seed? Do you have, have you seen those uh, wood dolls that you shape to draw like uh, body forms? I put one of those up there like a scarecrow. <laughs> To scare the birds away. <laughs> I'm trying to be creative, okay? Uh, oh, can I show the back? Definitely. There you go. There you go, Jenny. And remember, we glue based the, like, let me show. In the first video, I showed you how to add a little bit of glue like this on the inside, right? 
to hold them together. And that's what I was releasing earlier. It was just so satisfying that I went ahead and released all of them. But so now the paper is loose and it's easy to pop up. I'm not going to pop mine out yet because I need to sew more to the other edges here. So I'm just going to leave them in. Yay! Okay, one and a half and two inch. Okay. Do you get, have you even seen how big the two inch dilly flowers are? They're huge. <laughs> like, my face is huge. This is a two inch dilly flower. Oop, there we go. Can you see? So the edge pieces are, are not going to fit on one paper. Just so you know, so you will have to cut and paste. Yes, you can go ahead and pop out your petals now or just leave them in. I like to leave them in just until I give it a good press. I'm waiting for my iron. Let me see if it heat it up here. I have to flip it to get it to turn on. So yeah, you can definitely pop them out now if you want or leave them in. I like to leave them in until I've got more edges sewn in here. But if you glue based, yeah, it's easy. To just lift up and of course I don't have nails see how it comes undone like that. Gonna get that corner if you have nails it's easier plus I've got a little tool that I like to use to remove and then it just comes out there we go and um, if you give it a press before you try to remove your papers, it's even easier because it kind of warms up your glue a little bit. Let's see. But the reason I like to leave my papers in as long as possible is so that I don't have to fiddle with the seam allowances, you know, coming undone or bending the other way. And that dark one is where the paper is missing. That that's why it looks darker against the uh, against my dark desk here. But now it looks lighter. It pops out really easy. Yeah. And if you have one of those cuticle pushing things, yeah, it makes it easier, especially when you don't have you know long nails. I like to keep my nails short, and then it's harder to get in. Let's see. Uh, placemats with the two in shapes. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Or we could all be making masks with dilly flowers. I just made this big sample just to have some fun with it. But it was huge. And that's all you need to do today. So all your dilly flowers to your dilly edges. So that next week we can sew, start sewing them together. Or you can just keep it as one and make it into a mug rug. Or uh, if you're doing the half inch, makes it in, make it into a little coaster. Maybe I should just keep mine at once so I can just show you how to undo everything next week after you're ready, and then you'll um uh, you'll get an email so you can show me how many you've made, and then post some photos so I can send you the diamond shapes if you want to fill them in with diamonds, so that you don't have just hexes hexagons like the dilly hexagons lying against each other. So instead of this, you would have diamonds in between. So you can do top row and bottom row like this. Oops. <clears throat> Let's see. And you would fill this with diamond shape, maybe the same background fabric as your dilly flowers. Or you can do a contrast to make it pop, right? So you get more variation that you can play with. And that's it. So don't remove all your edge pieces. You can go ahead and remove the papers after you're done for next week for the uh, flower, the hexagon, and the petals. But make sure you leave your edges in. Carolyn, you're done with your one inch? You're done? You're done? Yes? Yes? Yeah! <laughs> awesome. And Noni, if you want to make the uh, table topper, you would need seven of these completed dilly flowers on the dilly edges. And Julie goes, 
I wanted to put small dilly flowers on niece's blankets. Oh, do I just hands? Yeah, you would just applicate like I applicate the flowers to the edges, but you would remove the papers before you put them on your niece's blankets. Okay, like a traditional applique. Hmm. On the back side, are we supposed to see stitches? Yeah, you'll see stitches. Kathy, you don't have to worry about them because they'll be hiding be behind the seam allowance. Let me show it. I'll just glue this back on later so I can show you. That. Yeah, you'll see the stitches on the back, which is fine because they'll as long as they don't show on the front, you're good to go. Let me remove this one real quick. Why do I insist on short nails? There we go. Pop that sucker out. Oop. You see, like I was mentioning earlier, how the seam allowance kind of raises up. So you want to go ahead and press it right now to keep it into place so it doesn't. The So the shape doesn't get funky looking okay but you can see my stitches here right around the curve can you let me take my glasses off yeah let me go closer see my stitches they're not pretty but they're just on the back and if I flip it over don't get dizzy Shoop. you don't see the stitches at all right but you got perfect nice curve and when you remove the paper, it'll just blend it even further. Okay, so now I'm going to go put this back so I can sew it to other edges. Um, Cindy, I'm sending you the diamond. You get an email and you get to reply to me and then you get diamonds. Uh, let's see, Julie, what size square would you recommend for the one inch? If I was to applique them all to a square background piece, the one inch, oh, well, well, it depends on how much you want on the sides of the whole piece around here. So this one, if you want about this much all the way around, this is how far up are you across? Six, about eight. Eight and a half, eight and a half inch square should be good. Yeah. Eight and a half inch square, it will look nice on. Because you will get this amount of fabric that you see here, about eight and a half inch all the way around. Yeah. But one good way to do uh, experiment on this size is just take a piece of paper and put your flower on top of it. Now, let's say I was to take this big old hunker, right? I would put it on a background piece of paper just to see oh that's the kind of amount of fabric I want to see all the way around and then I can play with it instead before you cut fabric or order order fabric that's one good way to determine um. oh 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 ooh, okay yeah Cindy oh definitely so you'll get the sizes um. Nancy, you signed up for the uh, Facebook Facebook group, the EPP Society. I'll look for you so you can get in there. Nancy White. <gasps> Kathy got it. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I think that's, yeah. Yeah, Nancy, I'll look for you so you can hop into the group and join the conversation there. And that is all for today, ladies and gents. And if you don't have any questions, I'll see if I know this there's, there's a little bit of lag. Make sure you don't have any final questions. But remember you can always put uh, questions in the comments after the uh, video is done processing. It takes about 24 hours, I've noticed. And then you'll be able to comment below. Or if you're in the Facebook group, you can ask questions there. And you can also um 
post on your Instagram feed if you're on Instagram and just tag me at Elise Beck so I know you asked me a question. If you don't tag me, I won't see it and then I'll feel bad that you don't get your question answered. So we'll... So you have several options. And if all else fails, just email me, okay? <laughs> and we'll figure it out, all right? So I'll see y'all next week. And keep on posting your photos. I love seeing them. Let me see all your flowers and your dilly edges. And let's sew these suckers together. And we'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye! <laughs>